Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the SSTO Minma Space. Yes, we're going to be launching this SSTO, get it to Minmas, and start construction of base. In fact, we're going to do two launches. I would have done more, but I didn't have time. First off, let's have a look at this launch. And yes, we have a load of Raper engines. That's to give this that extra speed. And that's because even though this has a dual wing design, it does not have enough lift. It only has just enough lift to make sure that it goes straight when we're about 300 meters per second. You can see I'm struggling to keep the nose pointed down. Until it gets up to about 400 meters per second, then we'll be able to get this thing up into orbit. Other than that, this is a standard SSTO kick to get up into orbit. So let's get into a bit of space news. And I think the biggest one which most people seem to be talking about is Elon Musk's spaceship. Um, I think that's what he's calling it. Starship. Now at the moment they've built a mock-up which is not completely a mock-up. It's going to be doing uh, VTOL vertical takeoff landings and testing its hopping capabilities. Don't forget, they have to test everything. They did this with the Falcon 9, rocket landings and... So I think it's going to be a while before we see that go anywhere near the moon or Mars. And I'm not convinced that's going to be the final design of it. I'm still wondering if this is going to be something they put on the top of Falcon Heavy and then send on its way to another planet. Perhaps this is more of a return craft. I don't know, I'm just speculating here. I haven't looked up 100% into the subject. Which I can't because there's still a lot of things that people don't know, other than what Elon Musk has said. As I did mention, they were going to launch this on a larger rocket. I think it's something called the Super Heavy, or uh, I think it's the replacement for the BFR, the Big Friendly Rocket. They haven't revealed any more on that, the large rocket design they've got, and obviously they're going to be changing things because, well, any any technology develop is going to change over time. So, yes, we're going to have to keep an eye on this one, guys. We'll just have to watch the test for now and hope that Elon does get us to Mars or, or at least the moon. At least if we go to the moon, we have a better chance of bringing people back alive. I don't think we've got the technology to stay alive on Mars for a long period of time. And talking about the moon, that gives me a good segue onto China's mission where they've landed on the far side of the moon, which people call the dark side, and that's because it's radio dark, which someone pointed out to me, which is quite clever, actually. Didn't think of it dark that way. It's not dark because of light, but it's dark because of radio waves from Earth, which makes it a pretty good place to put a radio telescope, believe it or not. But getting back onto the subject, they have started their rover exploring the surface of the moon. I'm not sure if they got equipment on that rover to test uh, soil samples and whatnot, but they are using this as, I think, as more of an experiment. Obviously, they can do exploration and science, but obviously they can use this to find out the best way of doing a sample return mission to the moon, because this, I think this will be the first time they do a sample return mission, and this will be on the far side, uh, let me have a quick look. Well, all I can find out is that scientists want to go to the South Pole of the Moon because it's a it's an area of interest and they think that it might help them explain the, the existence of the Moon more so than the Apollo rocks that were sent back because don't forget, some of these were from lava flow, pro, the flows that were on the surface and that was because it was a landing space which was flat and easy for them to land on. And, you know, with human life, you're going to have to. Okay, that's enough space news for a moment. Let's have a look what we got on screen. We've finally got into orbit around Minmus, and I almost misplaced my maneuver now because I'm on retrograde orbit, because I want to land on the Greater Flats on Minmus. I think that's where I'm landing. Can't be 100% sure, but I think that is where we're going. And I decided to try a landing technique, which was explained to me in a comment... And I've seen some people do it, but I haven't worked out how to do it properly. And that is sort of a reverse SSTO or space plane landing. As you can see, I'm cutting my velocity down a bit. Obviously, anything on Minmus that lands on Minmus normally bounces because of the low gravity. What I'm going to try here is reduce my velocity, my horizontal, no, vertical velocity. And then hopefully we can land vertically and cut our 
vertical speed with the brakes on the SSTO. Now, I was expecting disaster on this. And yes, you probably guessed it. I chickened out at the last minute. Trying to cut as much velocity as possible. And I started to realize that I'm going to hit myself into the ground. So, yes, let's do a reverse thrust. Quickly as possible. Wheels touch down. And. And hey, presto, we have survived. Okay, so we got down to 10 meters per second and the brakes cut that down. So, not really a successful reverse landing. But hey, we survived, which is <laughs> the best that you could ever hope for. Okay, if you're doing a base on Minmas, you might as well just use RTS because it uses a lot less uh, space on your spacecraft or your base. And then make sure you don't have enough RCS thrusters on there. I've actually engineered this base so that if you wanted to, you could take it up into orbit and then you could make a space station out of it or anything else you want. So yes, that's the future plan of this. Why not? Why not a base that you can put into orbit and land at will? Anyway, here we have Jebediah, Bill Kerman, Bob Kerman, and Valentina Kerman actually is on this mission. And isn't by accident, actually. I left them in the cockpit without thinking about it. But we also have two Kerbals, which I purposely put in the base below. And actually, they will come in handy, because we'll find out. We've got this spacecraft in orbit. We've got a maneuver node to set it back to Kerbin. However, that maneuver node is going to be nine days' time to wait for. So while we're doing that, let's send up another mission. And you've probably noticed by here that we have four rear landing gear. Now, the first two, the ones on the side, I have to retract before pulling back. Otherwise, the spacecraft won't be able to pull up. Because I got them as forward as possible. They're just to make it sure it's stable on the initial launching of it. It's not too unstable. It's just that it wobbles about a bit. Especially when you've got the SAS engaged. Anyway, while we're sending this to Minmas into orbit and to construct the base, let's talk a bit more about space news. Something interesting, actually. And I found this quite interesting. Perhaps this could be the future. It sounds really odd when you think about it, because it's steam-powered probes. No, it's not going to be powered by steam. It's not going to have a little steam engine in it and running little pistons. No. So the idea here is that there's a lot of deposits out there in the universe and there's a lot of cold places as well as hot places. The hot places are actually small, minute compared to the cold places in the, in the universe. So what we could do is mine some of this cold deposits, ices, water, vapor, oxygen, even hydrogen. I'm not sure how it does hydrogen freeze. It probably does at some point, or it's more of a gas, I think. But we can mine those deposits and use them to create propellants for our spacecraft. They've actually done experiments with this and it's worked quite well, so we could send robots out there to mine this all this to put all these deposits out and we'll use it for propellant. That means our space probes can go everywhere or anywhere. And all you have to do is look at Kerbal Space Probe. We have the mining equipment, the refining equipment. So, I think it's quite possible, actually. I don't think they'll make liquid oxygen, liquid uh, fuel, but it can use that to propellant, use a heating element to sort of like fire it out. That means you don't have to carry the propellant around. And yes, the mission on screen, we did do a vertical landing here. And that was more because I was a wimp of trying it out. And oh yes, watch this bit. Let's do a power slide. I recommend that you don't do this on any other planet. At least Minmus has the flats which you can do this properly. Which I think is awesome. Anyway, let's get this SSTO over to our base. We can undock the part and send it over to the base. And then, luckily we have two Kerbals on the base. We can send one Kerbal into the SSTO to return it back to Kerbin. Now, if you're interested in how to dock things on a base, what I normally do is I work out a standard. Basically, I've got landing legs, the similar ones I've got to the base, the small landing legs. 
I place them on the side, rotate them twice using the Amble Snack 2, which is in the Vehicle Assembly Building, and then I angle them just two clicks. And if you make sure you do that on all the same size parts, all the same, like the, I think I've got the Mark III size parts here, then you can make sure that the height of them is always the same. They might be slightly off, you may have to do fine adjustments to them, but all in all, it works quite well, as we'll probably find out by here, or it'll fail completely and I'll be proven wrong. Also, that's another, another reason why I've chosen Minras, because you've got the flats there, and it makes sure that the entire base is aligned properly. Anyway, let's extend those panels. And I feel a photo opportunity come up, but coming up by here. So let's get a Kerbal who we got. Dookie. And yes, I thought Dude Gee was a cool Kerbal name to have. We came here for the ice cream. So I suppose what we could do in the future is some sort of tourist business if we've got ice cream over here. Anyway, let's get the Kerbal in the SSTO. And I said the photo opportunity was up, so let's reposition this shuttle. Oh, the SSTO. It does more look more like a shuttle, to tell you the truth. Get our photo opportunity of the Kerbal jump in next to the base with Kerbin in the background as well. What else do you want? Let's Instagram that and then return our other Kerbals, which have been waiting in Minus Orbit for about nine days. Now, with the return of this mission, what I suggest you do is sort of like dip slightly in the atmosphere, which I planned about just over 50 kilometers up, and then and in conjunction, use the nuclear engines on the SSTO to reduce your orbit further. Now, I did a mistake here. I've only got about 500 meters per second. No, 200 meters per second left. I don't have nearly enough delta V if I need to make any corrections to land at the KSC. But let's give her a go. Now, I'm a bit shallow, so... And also, I found that this thing flips out of control. This is the third time that I've tried this re-entry. So I've decided we'll just boost on past, take the re-entry heating like the Kerbals that we are. Oh, and don't forget to quick save. With this, this situation, I always suggest that you use the Alt F5 quick save that you can rename. That way, if you want to go back to a previous quick save, then yeah, you have a chance of surviving. Okay, let's try this. Now, we're slowing down enough, but apparently not enough. <laughs> As I said, this is quite unstable. I need to re-engineer it so that when it's almost empty, the center of mass still is in front of the center of lift. But with all that said and done, let's try to get this to the KLC. And, uh, yeah, we do not have enough Delta V. And I should really disable the nuclear engines. I realize by here that we don't have enough Delta V to get back to the mainland, but we are close to the island runway. So, yes. Now, the island runway is quite short, so I think we're most likely going to crash or at least go off the end of it but it's a better survival option than the water. Also note, if I release this as a craft file for people to download, I haven't put a hotkey for the disabling the nuclear engine, so yeah, you're gonna have to do that manually. Either that or remember to add the hotkey. So it looks like we're gonna make it. Just need to align ourselves. Ooh, yes, we're close, but I think we'll do it. 273 meters per second left, we will we'll do it. The best thing to do when you're landing is to make sure it's lined up well in advance. Don't do it like this, because things like this happen. Oh, just made it, let's go quick landing. No! Quick eject, eject, eject! C Jeb, Jeb has died! <laughs> Okay, this is one of my better landings because the Kerbals have survived! Believe it or not, most of my space planes, SSTOs, or even space shuttles, they do crash. So, yes, it's 
It's a miracle that three Kerbals survived. Anyway, I'm Orbeta. Trust me, I'm an engineer.